Lesson 3, Part 2. In Part 1, we covered an introduction to CSS. I taught you a little bit about the style rule. I showed you what it looked like and talked about the parts. And I showed you how to change the color of text using a style rule. I'm going to review that again, just so that we really hammer it home. And I'm also going to talk about how to change the background color of the browser uh, using CSS. So back to the style rule thing. Okay. So style rule goes inside of a style sheet. There are three, three ways to make style sheets. This is the way that we are going to be making a style sheet for now. This is called the global style sheet. It goes into the head of our HTML document. It goes right below title. So it opens and it closes. Inside of the, the opening tag of the style sheet, we need to have this type attribute. It will say type equals text slash CSS. Okay? This initiates a style sheet. It says that the style sheet will begin here and end down here. Okay? Inside of there, we're going to create a whole bunch of rules. Rules that will modify the way our HTML will display in a browser. So I'm going to take this rule out for a second, save it, I'm going to run it. This is what it looked like before. I had my headlines with the horizontal rules below them. I had some bold, I had some emphasis and some italics in there. And I went all the way down to H5. Did this in lesson one and two. Okay. Now I'm going to put back that style rule again. Okay. So for a style rule, the parts are selector. We're using what's called an element selector. An element selector automatically and directly selects an element, HTML element of our choice, and allows us to apply a rule to modify it, to change it. In this case, we are directly selecting P, which is the paragraph element. So all of these P's down here, you can see they're all highlighted green. They're going to be modified when we add some sort of change in there. We're going to change the color. Color is done like this color colon and then the color we want semicolon style rule always looks like this selector we're using an element selector curly braces open and close and then we can have a bunch of different uh, declarations in here this declaration says that we're using the color property and we're changing it to the green value. Okay. If I wanted to, I could add all sorts of other types of, of style rules to this, but we're going to keep it simple for now. So I want you to try that. Do a P selector and make one declaration, color green. If you need to pause, pause. I'm going to start with the next instruction in just a second. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to modify the body element of the HTML document. Okay? It's going to look like this. We're using an element selector, so we're directly selecting the body HTML element for, for, for modification. You notice when I select, I highlight this, it highlights it down here. It tells me what I'm going to be modifying. So I'm going to modify everything that's inside of the body. Body closes here. It opens up here. Everything in between these is going to be modified in some way. So I could do background dash color and then I can pick a color. Gold, will that work? Well, let's try it. Sure enough, gold worked and I used a green font. Funny, I'm a Vikings fan and I unconsciously chose Packer colors. Should be disgusted with myself, but I'm not. Anyhow, back on task. So what we've done here is we've selected the body, everything inside of body, and we've decided that we're going to change it, okay? I could do all sorts of other stuff within this body style rule. If I wanted to, I could do color red, save it, see what happens. It changes 
um, the headlines to red. Okay. Now, it didn't change the paragraphs, and we're going to get into that later. This has something to do with, um, with different levels of selection. Okay. And I'm not going to talk about that right now. That has to do with the cascading part of the idea behind cascading style sheets. So body and paragraph have both been modified. Clear? Okay, that's the end of this part of this lesson.